The G-Skill Ripjaws KM570 gaming keyboard features genuine Cherry MX mechanical switches, customizable per-key lighting effects and macro support, full N-key rollover, and more. Click the link in the description for more details. Excellent! What's up guys? I am in Sonoma, California. I've been invited here by AMD for a special event that they're having in the pavilion right behind me. Lots of people are gathered, but I'm actually the only YouTuber here. So you're getting some exclusive content, exclusive footage that you can't find anywhere else on the internet, except potentially from all the journalists who are back there who are also covering this event. But anyway, AMD has promised some massive reveals. There's going to be some stuff that I can share with you guys right now, and there's going to be more stuff coming, uh, let's say, in the next few weeks. So uh, let's get started. What are they talking about? I don't know. Well, if you watched my video yesterday, you know they talked about Radeon Instinct with just a taste of the new Vega GPU family. Today we're talking about Zen, though, and those rumors you've heard are true. The 8-core, 16-thread Zen-based CPU AMD has been teasing for months will now be called Ryzen. Not a bad name, I suppose. I will nickname it Mellow Bread. Beyond the name, did they confirm a launch date? No, they're still just listing ballparks, unfortunately, with desktop Summit Ridge chips coming in Q1 2017, server Naples chips coming in Q2, and notebook chips, codenamed Raven Ridge APUs, from our understanding, in the second half of next year. No price updates either. Sorry. We do have juicy specs though, like a pleasingly ample 20 megabytes L2 and L3 cache, and a solid base frequency listed at 3.4 gigahertz before turbo. The AM4 platform, meanwhile, has confirmed support for USB 3.1 Gen 2, NVMe, and I guess, sure, SATA Express 2, but no one really cares about that. Inside Ryzen, though, there is a group of technologies which AMD calls SenseMI. The MI stands for Machine Intelligence. These are pure power, precision boost, extended frequency range, neural net prediction, and smart prefetch. Pure power is dynamic power management. It monitors temperature, speed, and voltage, and is millivolt and milliwatt accurate. And if you're wondering what infinity fabric is, I found that just picturing Harry Potter's invisibility cloak somehow helped. Pure Power works in tandem with Precision Boost, and Precision Boost is AMD's take on DVFS, Dynamic Voltage and Frequency Scaling. Intel's Turbo Boost is also DVFS. Precision Boost handles on-the-fly CPU clock adjustment without halts or queue drains, and features precision tuning with 25 MHz increments. Extended frequency range, if it works as described here, is absolutely bananas. It's listed as an enthusiast feature and seems to indicate that if you turn it on and say upgrade your cooling solution and give your CPU lower temperatures, the CPU will just overclock itself to eat up the temperature headroom. And it's fully automated. I think I just pooped my pants. Neural net prediction, though, describes how these CPUs slowly learn how to be more human by watching us and learning our deepest secrets and desires. I might be inferring this info a little bit, but smart prediction does mean there's a true artificial network inside each Zen, ZP, Zen CPU, which builds a model of decisions based on past software code execution to predict future behavior. And yes, they used the word scary on this slide, and I don't think it was a mistake. Finally, we have smart prefetch. Prefetch itself is nothing new, but AMD has improved upon it and made it smarter for Zen, meaning your CPU will anticipate the location of future data accesses by application code while learning algorithms model and learn to improve its effectiveness. All of these things are cool, but I think what you guys will find most interesting is a couple side-by-side -side live benchmark tests that they ran for us. In both cases, they compared a Ryzen CPU at 3.4 gigahertz without turbo enabled versus a stock 6900K with turbo enabled, both CPUs have 8 cores and 16 threads. The first demo was a handbrake encode that took about 60 seconds, and while it was difficult for me to record both of the screens at once, I can confirm that the Ryzen CPU won the race by several seconds. That's quite impressive. The second demo involved Blender, rendering on all 8 cores and 16 threads on both systems, and both CPUs completed it in about the same time, while also showing that both the idle system power and the load system power was about 15 watts less on the Ryzen system. I can say without a doubt that if Ryzen continues to perform at this level and efficiency when it's finally independently tested across a range of applications, we're going to see a huge shakeup in the consumer CPU market. So consider yourselves further teased, but also consider this. The 8-core Intel Core i7-5960X debuted August 29th, 2014, and still costs over $1,000 two years later. And while Ryzen's Q1 launch could mean the beginning of January or the end of March, 
I say the sooner the better, because I don't know about you guys, but I am totally ready for at least a slightly more affordable 8-core CPU with present-day IPC performance. That's all for this video though guys, thanks for watching, hit the like button, comment down there, subscribe and check out the description for links to my store as well as further reading by some of those respectable journalists I was hanging out with. We'll see you next time.